I'm Tony Meridian, owner of uh, Gamebird, serial number 46. I was uh, first fascinated by aviation when I was in fourth or fifth grade, when my friend brought over this line-controlled airplane, which is had a ball trying to start the motor for two or three hours, never had much success, but that was one of the two events that sparked an interest in me in aviation. After that, I couldn't stop reading and about aviation, collecting pictures, my wall was full of pictures of aviation or every time we went to the airport to greet family coming for a visit, I'd, I'd be glued to the glass watching the airliners coming in. Not much really happened thereafter, uh, having lived in the Middle East. Uh, aviation was rather limited to the general public. When we moved to the States in 1978, we moved to New Orleans and on Sundays I used to ride my bicycle to Lakefront Airport, watching airplanes from behind the fence, thinking that, hey, somebody else can do this, but not I. Until this instructor noticed my presence there on Sundays and asked me if I was interested in airplanes or if I want to come sit in, in a Piper Tomahawk. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and when I'm sat in the Piper Tomahawk and I'm touching the controls and looking at all the instruments and that's that was the second spark of aviation in me and thinking that maybe there's a way I can do this. He told me a little bit about taking flight lessons and what's involved in the age requirements etc. So I went home that day and talked to my parents and asked them if they would help me with some flight lessons and it was a flat no, no way, no how. I was a little bummed but that same day, I'm out in front of my yard mowing the grass. And this lady pulls up in her car and asking me if I was interested in working at their restaurant. Without hesitation, I said yes. And uh, it turns out that it was probably one of the best things I'd done in that age for myself because I worked there throughout all high school. And, and that financed my flying without my parents' knowledge, of course, sadly. But I was able to take lessons and I soloed on my 16th birthday and got my private pilot's license on my 17th birthday. Uh, the other thing I specifically enjoy doing is uh, mentoring the youngsters that are interested in aviation. As I said earlier, uh, my pathway to this arena by, by somebody who took an interest in me that one day and showing me their airplane and it left an impression that to this day I remember. So whenever I see a, um, a youngster that's interested in aviation or wants to learn more about it to see if that's where they want to go, I'm happy to give them a ride and introduce them to aviation, especially right now. It's a, the demand is high and the supply is very low of qualified pilots. So for the young folks that want to, men or women that want to get into aviation, it's a great time to do it. It really is. What used to take maybe 10 or 15 years to get to an airline level, it may take four or five years now. So uh, I encourage all the youngsters that have a remote interest in aviation to pursue it. And, and, and I'm happy to share the love. Ended up going to college at the University of Arizona, got a degree in aerospace engineering, and at the same time, I got involved with the Marine Corps Platoons Leaders Class, PLC, and the Navy ROTC in Arizona. Did well enough, got a scholarship, got a guaranteed flight slot with the Marines. Well, upon graduation in 1988, went off to Quantico, Virginia for about six months, did the basic course, and in December showed up in flight school. Started flight school about a month or so later. During the primary training in Pensacola, or Whiting Fields, just north of Pensacola, I finished first in my class and I went into the helicopter training. It was the last week of the fiscal year, so there wasn't much options other than helicopters. So even though fighters were in my sight, helicopters is all I could have, and I was happy with that at the end. Everybody loves what they end up flying in the service. So went to helicopter training and did real well there, finished third in my class, and got lucky enough to fly Cobras in the West Coast out of Camp Pendleton. After the Marine Corps, the airlines were depressed. There wasn't a whole lot that we could do aviation-wise, so I followed my engineering path and started up my own company in Barawakwa dealing with water treatment of industrial sector, aerospace, biotech, oil and gas, hospitals, and uh, ran that company for 23 years. Throughout this whole time, I managed to uh, fly a variety of different airplanes. 
both for business and pleasure and uh, for a good chunk of it in uh, competition aerobatics and some air shows. Started with a uh, Mooney, uh, old Mooney, 1968 M20G, then got the Bi-Wing Pitts S2C, which gave me an opportunity to fly with Sean Tucker once. It was his dealership that I bought it from. I moved on to a extra 300L and then an extra 300LP. Then uh, I was partners in an Aerostar 601P and, uh, and off to a Cessna T310R, uh, Turbine Commander, up until 2019 uh, when I sold my business and then I went and got a type rating in the Gulfstream, the G5 uh, with the 550 and the five uh, differences and I managed to do some contract work. About mid-2020 I went full-time flying a G5 and I uh, currently fly a 550 uh, for a flight operation managed by Clay Lacey. So I competed from about uh, 1999 to 2007 with a couple of air shows in between. There was uh, three of us that had a little formation team. I have a lot of experience flying formation, especially two ship formation aerobatics. I would venture to say that I almost like formation aerobatic flying better than solo aerobatic flying because other than the three dimensions that you have, now you have another airplane that you're using as your horizon. If you're flying wing or if you're flying lead, then you got to be super smooth and earn the trust of the other guy that's following your lead because uh, you could be flying to the ground and if he's doing that correctly, he'll follow you to the ground. So you bear a big responsibility as lead to make sure you're smooth so he's not losing you and always keeping track of your wingmen to make sure they're sticking with you, being cognizant of your power changes and doing all of this without minimal talking on the radio, just hand signals and, and getting used to each other's uh, you know, habits and the things that you do for one another as a lead and wing. What I want to do with this is probably, if I have the time, I'd like to get back into competition aerobatics and perhaps some air shows. But with my current work flying schedule and other hobbies that I have, it uh, leaves me a little time to really excel at uh, competition. To, to do well in competition, it, it does really require a tremendous amount of time and effort and finances because if you're going to do it you're going to want to do it well and to place just like anything else is going to take a lot of focus studies and flying often and hard and coaching with somebody looking at you at the ground as a, as the judges would then it gives you a perspective that hey maybe your lines are not exactly correct or you're not using all of the box and without coaching you can only get so far competition flying it makes you an awesome pilot because it's all precision work and attention to detail. And even for guys that are regular pilots that have never flown aerobatics or just being upside down, it's a tremendous aid to safety because it teaches you about reaction and teaches you what it's like to be upside down and what to expect if you ever find yourself in, God forbid, in a thunderstorm or in an unwanted situation. Although it will be a surprise, at least it's not, it's, you've seen it before, you know what it feels like, it won't be a complete, uh, foreign environment. So I encourage all pilots that have never flown aerobatics and done just some basic aerobatics to go do it in your local airport or wherever they offer it. I did uh, competition aerobatics in the pits, started in sportsman category and I went up to intermediate and then when I had the extra I competed in the advanced. And when you get to the advanced you start pushing a lot more negative G's and you really gotta G yourself up and by what I mean by that G up is that uh, if you just get in the airplane and you haven't flown for a couple of months and you go fly hard aerobatics you're gonna feel it you're gonna land you're not gonna you're not gonna feel so good but once you G'd up kind of like working out you build up to it and you can go up there fly some hard aerobatics and you'll be fine but advanced unlimited categories there's a lot of negative G's and that just takes a lot more to get used to and get comfortable with it. It actually hurts. Uh, that's more like pressurizing your, uh, your brain rather than depressurizing when you're pulling positive Gs. The effect that you feel is very different. You feel a lot of pressure on your head and if you're wearing sunglasses, you feel like your eyeballs are actually touching the glass when you're pushing negative Gs. Whereas you're pulling positive Gs, it's more of that if you're not G'd up, you can gray out and possibly get that tunnel vision where the blood is leaving your brain. It's a hell of a machine. They've had great success with this airplane. It's made in the US. Uh, got a really good support network behind the airplane in the factory. It has the Lycoming AEIO 580 motor in it. The 305 horsepower, the four-bladed MT prop. 
Uh, it's got a roll rate of better than 400 degrees per second. All carbon fiber, uh, split wing, uh, cruises at 200 knots, 1,000 nautical mile range, although somebody just broke a record of flying for 1,400 nautical miles from Benville, Arkansas to Santa Monica. Uh, this particular plane, it comes with the option of single piece canopy, makes it a little bit more aerodynamic. And if you're doing competition or air shows, it uh, looks pretty sleek. Um, it's comfortable to go cruise cross country. Um, like I said, I flew it from Benville, Arkansas to here, just one stop. And it's just a fun airplane to fly. Serial number 46, uh, they just finished number 50. And the, back, the backlog as of now is about a year long. For all the pilot guys and the gearheads, uh, I mean, this, this plane is a marvel. I would humbly say it's the Ferrari of the skies, the performance. There's nothing else like it out there that can outperform this, unless you go into some of the World War II Warbirds or, you know, current military turbine aviation. Like I said, the roll rate is 400 degrees a second or more. The vertical penetration is unbelievable. It's fast. It's, it's a bit pitch sensitive during high alpha. alpha if you're slipping it for landing, uh, it gives you a little bit of feedback, which you get used to after the first flight in it. Uh, super easy to do a three-point landing on it. You just set the added three-point attitude, and then you adjust your rate of descent with power. And if you just maintain that attitude, it just touches down real easy. It's a, you would think that something that flies at 200 knots, it's, it would be kind of a beast to land, but not really. It slows down really nice. The slow flight envelope, it's, it's super easy. You slow it down to just above the stall speed uh, and keep it right at that envelope. And you got full authority, albeit a bit mushy, but you got full authority. You can do high degrees of bank and uh, she doesn't want to fly out of it. All the, uh, the gyroscopic maneuvers are super tame. You know, if you just pull the power back and uh, put this stick to neutral, she'll fly out of it. The upright flats, in, inverted flat spins, easy to get into and maintain and uh, easy to get out of. So the plane has a lot of capability. It has It's rated for plus 10, minus 10 Gs. So chances are I would hurt myself before I would hurt the airplane. Um, it's just a joy to fly. Clear.